Well, it's a big speech because after a very long time, the Labour Party is holding a conference thinking that it may well form the next government. But it's doing that against the backdrop of a pretty tough time that Britain's been through over the last 15 years and the danger that that continues into the early years of a Labour government. A lot of there, well, one particular line we were drawn to was this trickle-down economics that he wants to get rid of and he wants to have trickle-down jobs. I might have misquoted him. What was your reaction to that? Well, we all want jobs and we'd also like some uh, prosperity. I mean, the bigger picture for Britain isn't is getting the wrong kind of growth. It's that we haven't been having any decent growth. We've had half the productivity growth of other large OECD countries over the last 10 years. And whoever wins the next election needs, does need a serious plan to start turning that around. So whoever wins the next election is going to need a serious plan to get this economy growing again. It's been 15 years without that that growth and it's not really about the kind of it, it's just making sure we get some because wages have been flatlining for those 15 years. If they'd carried on growing at the rate they were before the financial crisis, the average worker would be £10,000 a year better off. That's the kind of growth we need to get back to. And how do you go about achieving that? Well, the argument from the Labour Party this week is that the centre of getting back to growth is higher investment. Higher investment by the public sector, particularly in green industries, and then providing a stability for the economy that brings private sector investment back in. On both of those, they've got a good story. What they haven't done is wrestle with some of the really difficult consequences that come with that. On public investment, given what's happening to interest rates, that may need to be funded by higher taxes, not just by more borrowing and then we look at when we look at the economy as a whole and we ask why isn't the private sector investing stability won't be enough we, we saw business investment in Britain go off a cliff in the early 2000s when the economy was pretty stable and the politics was pretty stable it's going to need a lot more than just stability to get this economy growing but that public investment I mean how willing do you think the public will be to pay higher taxes in order to achieve what growth later down the line well, in the long run, I think people know we need to invest to save the planet, but we also need to invest to make sure that we are seeing a country that's you know, handing it on in a better state for future generations, whether that's about at last getting round to building some houses or it's about saying to businesses, you know, this is a country where if you put the money in, you will get the returns and we'll all be better off in the long run. Well, there's big announcements just then on housing. Do you think Labour are moving in the right direction? Well, we obviously haven't seen the absolute details of what their planning reform looks like, but they've definitely made their minds up that they're happy to take on some vested interests that they're happy to say to people that don't want house building. You might not want it and you might not need it in your area, but Britain does need to be building and that is the right thing to be doing. You're shortly hosting an event or a fringe event on um, creating jobs for Britain. What's the, a quick summation of that? Well, it's not just about jobs, it's about what does it take to get good jobs. If we step back and say what's gone well over the last two decades, it's the minimum wage has really driven up wages at the bottom. They've grown twice as fast as wages for the rest of the population. That's a big success. But have we seen the rest of work improve in the same way? No. If we look at what's happened to the lowest earners, they're actually the group that has seen their job satisfaction fall the most over those times. So wages up, but job satisfaction down. And that's about the intensity of work. It's about the security of the hours that they have. So there's a lot more we need to do to make sure that good work exists right up and down this country. So how do they go about doing that? What, getting better relationships with businesses? Is that how they go about it? No, I mean, look, good jobs come from making sure that we've got industries that are able to make some money and pay those higher wages. We need to end the wage stagnation I've talked about. But there's also basic things like why do lower earners not get the kinds of work, the kinds of advantages at work that higher earners take for granted? If you're on a low wage and you need to take time off to look after your family, then you're not going to get paid for that time. But if I do that, I'll be perfectly happy to get paid through that day and I'll be able to cope. Or if it's sick pay, I get good occupational sick pay, so do most higher earners. But those on lower incomes won't see that kind of protection. You can't have that kind of dual class citizenship when it comes to the world of work. You need to have dignity and respect for everyone, whatever work they're doing.